Braintree was its incomparable self. And the big question, would it once again be a great day for the Irish and for Mr. Watt, last year's winner in particular? Tiberetta, 25 to 1 overnight, was attracting big support. But it was Mr. Watt at 6 to 1 that was in favour with the really big money. And what enormous sums were destined to change hands when those 34 horses had battled it out. Very well fancied was Oxo, Mike Scudamore up. It was a fine day and the going nearly perfect to the liking of Winberg, Tim Brookshaw in the saddle. Under these conditions, the outsiders were likely to remain outside. And now it's within seconds of 3.15. No sign of a difficult start, though the bookie fraternity noticed that Mr. Watt is sweating, a sign of nervousness. Any second now, they'll be away. Mr. Marsh waits for the chance. And they're off. 34 runners, four and a half miles to go. They pound on 550 yards to the first jump. Up and over. And for two of them, Nick Atkins and stop list. Number one jump is fatal. Now my right for Tattenham Corner. Now the newsreel cameras give you almost a jockey's eye view as we race on alongside those thundering hooves. What a sight it is, captured for the cinema screen more vividly than most of the fans saw it on the course itself. Surprise packet is up there with Tiberetta, the Crofter, Turmoil and Eternal. Surprise packets are mayor, 100 to 1 shot, carrying 10 stone 3, G. Scott up, going like a born Grand National winner. Fence 4 and the Crofter jumps it beautifully. But surprise pack, it's over already. And somewhere out of the picture, Oscar Wilde's down and a lot of good money with him. Tiberetta on the far side is well up. So are Eternal, the Crofter and Mr. Gay. And still this amazingly well-named surprise packet leads the field. Tiberetta, far side, almost level. Again, the camera puts us right in the race. The same two horses in the lead as they race on towards Beecher's Brook. Four foot ten high, the brook six feet wide, the drop tremendous, and what toll it takes as we see the breathtaking drama in slow motion. Henry Purcell, Mr. Gay, Glorious Twelfth, the Crofter and Dunup, all of them down. Safe and sound, the dreaded beaches behind them. Surprise Packet and Tiberetta still lead, running and jumping calmly as ever. Both over jump seven, forging ahead to the canal turn. And well up with them are Pintail, Oxo, John Jakes, Winberg, Eagle Lodge and Turmoil. No casualties at the canal. Surprise Packet has a useful lead over Tiberetta. It's no surprise when the little packet negotiates the brook perfectly. If this were not the Grand National, we might think the lion-hearted mare had the race in her pocket. But what a long way to go yet. Hyperator almost seems like a faithful attendant. And it's the same order over the next jump. But more into the picture now comes Oxo, third favourite, in the overnight callover, and running as if determined to justify that place. And then some. Jump 14, no change in the order, no falls. First circuit nearly complete. 16th jump of the national course, the water, sees surprise packet leading from Tiberetta, Kirsten, Mr. Watt, Oxo and Winburn. Surprise packet leads the 18 survivors on the second circuit of the course. Winberg has now taken second place. Surprise packet is no longer challenged by Tiberetta. Winberg and Oxo are close up. Natural injury horses, both of them. Tiberetta's back in fourth place, while Mr. Watt is next. The favourite's got rid of his stakes right and begins to look like the horse he was last year. But what's going to happen at Beecher's? To the dismay of thousands in a position to see, surprise packet fell. Kirsten, Mainstown, Irish Coffee, Kilbalione and Saltown all came to grief. But Oxo was over, followed by Winberg, whose jockey Tim Brookshaw has lost his stirrup. Oxo and Winberg still lead at the canal turn, clear it without effort, and are followed by Tiberetta and Mr. Watt. And now Canobie Lee refuses and unseats Jockey Nicholson. 
Green Drill falls, and one way and another, the canal does a bad turn to quite a few. Winberg and Oxo have forgotten the canal and race on to Valentine's Brook. There seem to be only four horses now left in the race. If the two leaders jump carefully and have the necessary stamina, they shouldn't be passed on the way to the finish. Mr. Watt is making a gallant try for the honour of winning for the second year in succession, but hasn't the speed to do it. All jumps cleared. Oxo's in front, but Winberg goes all out to overtake. He may do it yet. But at the moment of dire need, Oxo holds off the challenge. Winner of the national by a length and a half from Winberg. Mr. Watt, another eight lengths behind. And as the winner was led in, there was much praise for Mike Scudamore and also for Weinberg's jockey, Tim Brookshaw, who ended the race with a broken stirrup leather. Happiest man on the course was Bedfordshire farmer Jack Big, the winning owner. It's the first time he's had a horse in the national. And bravo, Oxo, the horse that put beef into his backers.